Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we started our simple UI system, and we are borrowing some concepts from CSS and web development. Concepts such as margin, which you can see here, and padding, which is actually currently the entire contents of this UI component. Since there are no children or any content inside, um, its size is actually made up of its padding and it has a background color. So for today's video, we're gonna make sure that our UI containers are gonna be able to have children of type UI component so that our container can contain any UI components that we would like, including other UI containers. All right, let's get to it. So find your UI package and your UI container class. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into an abstract class. So you're not gonna be able to call UI container or you're not gonna be able to instantiate a UI container directly. Instead, we're gonna make a vertical container and a horizontal container, which, which contain the logic for calculating their sizes and positions respectively. And you'll see how in a minute. So since this is now abstract and I want to be able to change the background color from my uh, from the other containers or my child containers, I'm just going to make it protected. So let's make a protected list of UI components and call it you. Do we call it? Maybe we call it children. Ooh, not sure. Let's call it children. We can always change if we want to. And let's instantiate it. So children is a new array list. All right. So here are some things that we need to change. When we calculate the size, we don't want it to just be the padding horizontal and padding vertical. We want to know what it is, including the child sizes. So for this reason, Let's make some protected abstract and a size and say calculate content size. All right, so our um, implementing classes will need to implement this. And what we then do is inside of here, let's first get that size, calculated content size, calculate content size, all right. And when we have that, let's say that size is a new size. Just put these on separate rows and say that padding get horizontal plus calculated content size get width. And also add the calculated content size get height. All right, that's good. Now let's do something similar with the positions. Of course, the child positions do not affect um, our position this component's position. So when we do that, we don't have to take something back. We just say void, calculate, I don't know, content position maybe, just to keep it. I would like to say child position or child positions, not sure. Let's not dwell on it. Let's call it instead. Um, and the way that we do that, I think we just do it here. Calculate, sorry, calculate content position. All right, that's what I want. And it will be up to our implementing classes to deal with that. Inside of the get sprite, we wanna do some more changes. So here we wanna loop through our children. So for UI component, uh, UI component inside of our children list, Let's do graphics, draw image, UI component, get sprite, UI component, get position, int x, UI component, get position, int y, and null for the image observer. So I think that's it for that. We will need to remember to update our um, children as well. So children for each. Um, Component, maybe, sure. Component update state. Okay, and we are 
going to need a way to add a child component. So let's make that public void add component or add child. No, add component, add UI components. So we're very clear with what, what we're doing. So UI component, UI component, children add UI component. And then we probably need to recalculate. Well, we do that every update. If we need to, we'll put it here. I'm not sure if we do. All right, I think I'm happy with this. Let's make a class that implements this. So let's start with a horizontal horizontal container. <laughs> horizontal. Huh, I'm from Sweden. What can you say? All right, so this will extend UI container. Let's implement the methods that we need, which are, well, these methods. And so what we need to do now is that we need to loop through our children. And now that it's a horizontal container, we're going to be adding on the width. But for the height, we want to check which is the tallest child or the one with the max height. We want to save that and use that for our height. And you'll see what I mean. So combined child width, set it to zero. And then make a two tallest child height. Set that to zero at first. So now we want to loop through our children. So UI component inside of children. So combine child with let's add plus equals UI component get size get width plus the UI component get margin get horizontal. Okay. And then we want to check the height. So if this UI component get size get height is larger than tallest child height, then we want the tallest child height to be this height. All right. And once we've looped through all of our children, let's see, we want to return a new size of the combined child width and the tallest child height. And that is it. And then for the positioning. Sorry, let's see. In the same manner, we need to keep track of since this is a horizontal container, we're only really interested in the x axis. So we need to loop through our children, add the size and move our x position and then set their x positions accordingly. So first of all, let's keep track of current x. And it will start at the padding get left. All right, so for UI component, UI component inside of children, we want to first move it over by whatever uh, margin it has, get margin, get left. So it's left margin. Let's move our X pointer over. And now we're at the top left corner of where we want our child to be. So let's say UI component. Maybe I should have called it child. It makes more sense to me that in children there are child. I don't know. All right, so UI component set position. And we want it to be a new position. And it will have the current X and the padding get top. Right, so I port that position and let's move our current X over first by the UI component, get size, get width, and then current X will also be added with the margin right. Right, so our pointer is moving. First, we added whatever margin it had to the left, and then we set the position, which will always be at the top left of, of the content. 
and then we moved it over with the entire size and the margin for the right. And then we can move on to the next child. All right, and I, I think this is it, right? So if we now go to test this out, let's go to our game state. And now we're not allowed to create just a UI container anymore. So let's create a horizontal container. And now it has some padding, it has some margin. We don't need the margin. Instead, let's just add some, let's set background color here so we can keep track of color and say color dot something that you could possibly see. Let's call it, let's just make it gray. All right, and we don't have this method yet. So let's create that method inside of the UI container. Color, let's name this color. So background color is color. All right, go back to the game state. So now we've set our um, primary container gray and it's still red by default, which means that if we just say container, add UI component, new horizontal container, this should be red. Let's duplicate this a couple of times so that we can see something. Now, if we look at it, here's what you can see. So this is actually a default container and a default container and default container. And right now they don't have any margin, which is why they're so tightly together, just back to back. Uh, let's just re reduce the um, padding so it's not that large. And actually, let's give our UI container a default margin, just so that we can see what is happening. So a new spacing, give it something not too high, five. Now we should see some distance between them all. So three individual dots, and we do. So that's awesome. Now we can put a container inside a container inside a container. And currently we only have these um, horizontal containers. So this is the parent and these are the three children and the parent is ordering them in this way. But now that we have the horizontal container, we can easily make a vertical container as well. So start by just copying this uh, copy class and let's name it vertical container, vertical container. Awesome. And now basically all we want to do is flip everything, right? So this is combined child width and tallest child height. Let's just name this combined child height and widest child width. And they both start at zero. And so what we want to do is we want to take the combined child height and not look at width. We want to look at height. We want to get the vertical margin and then in the same way we look at width here and we say widest child width then we want to set the wild widest child width to the child width and so this won't be flipped of course so the width is always first so widest width and combine child height and in the same way in the content position we can do current, let's name it current Y. So I just use the shift FX to name it current Y. And we start with padding get to top. So whatever is at the top down for each child, we add first get to top. Then we set the position to not the current Y of course, but the padding get left and then to the current Y. Okay, and then we add the height and then we add the bottom margin. So with this in place, if we now change, sorry, are going to the game state. If we now change this horizontal container to a vertical container, then watch what happens. And look, now we have so much freedom and we can keep adding containers within containers. So you could first have a row of containers here. You could have a container with more containers inside. It just, it gives us so much flexibility. So I think this is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
Hej då!